All right, welcome back to Anime Savant, everyone. This week, I am Choo Choo. Damn, this week I'm I'm Anya. I'm in an Anya mood. Oh, okay. Um, so what, what do you want to actually? Let's start because I've been behind. So let's start with Eminence in Shadow because Bro. holy fucking shit, this weeb. I. No, 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 not a weeb. This chuny, chuny fucking anomaly of a monster is, I, I've i never watched a show where I'm like, I hate this nigga so much, but I love you. Like, I love you, but I hate you at the same time. Like, it's so ridiculous. And I keep saying it just like Mob Sakai. It's like Mob Sakai, but he just takes it to a whole other level. Like, Mob Sakai was just like, Nigga, I just want to chill. Like, I just want to, like, you know, live an easy life. Like, you know, relax, blah, blah, blah. This nigga is just like, I want to be the side character, but I want to be a center of attention at the same time. So, like, I have to make myself the main mob character in a way. When this nigga literally one episode runs up and gets cut, I'm like, I know he did this on purpose. I know it was stupid. And then you start the next episode with him being like, this is my moment. I can mm-hmm. practice my fucking, like, fake shit like right now or the the tournament when that nigga was eating potato or whatever blood packets and getting knocked back by that bitch and being like i gotta practice my flailing just like all this stupid shit and the whole time i'm like this is so dumb she's gonna fall in love with him isn't she of course she fucking falls in love with him <laughs> fucking falls in love with her. She's like, I respect your courage and I, I acknowledge your love for me and all that shit like that. It, I'm so warped watching the show that when he said the sacred land, I was like, it's a made up place that like he and the girls just randomly meet. And then it wasn't. It was actually the sacred land. Nah. But it, I was just like... It's a whole other like kingdom yeah. area. Yeah. But because it was him saying it, I was like, I don't trust you. I feel like it's, it's full of shit. Like you're full of shit. And I... That uh, the end of that arc with um smart girl be like oh I'm going away to study da 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 the looks on her va- I don't know how to feel about this scene because the looks on her face when she was like <laughs> like it got real demented and then in something else I was like oh she's gonna be a problem for you in the future like big time big like time. he kind of created like a yandere rival for his own yeah made up batman character yeah and i definitely feel like she may in a way take that those like ancient artifacts the shit that she learned from that she might come back with that shit in a different yeah. way and be like i can shut all your magic down nigga like yeah like i can shut your shit off like that that's what that is but in the same vein i just like the world building and how they deal with the magic system with him especially when they did the artifact thing and everyone was like i can't use my magic and a nigga was like i can just you just have to hyper concentrate that shit and then you can still use it in a certain capacity but then of course he went on a fucking like dick stroking spree and was just like i'm on the roof eating and i'm just like sniping niggas because like <laughs> i'm all powerful like fuck you nigga it's just I don't know. I just I just enjoy the show so fucking much. I just ah, he is interesting. But I did like this past week's episode because the girls were getting more um, showtime, which I thought we were gonna get earlier in the series. But I'm okay with getting it now. And there was just a lot of titties. It was a lot of titties. Oh man, this week like homegirl literally like focus like using the magic to get big old titties. I was just like, okay, that is one way you can use it. I don't blame you. That to the thong scene at the end of the day i was like y'all should have just made this a swimsuit episode like we should have been it was a it it was a long gag series of gags but like weirdly they all kind of had set up and they all kind of had a payoff which is more than you can usually say for this kind of thing like (gasps) i thought of you know this so this last episode i think was was episode 10 9 10 maybe it was 9 i don't know 9 9 10 yeah it was one yeah yeah. um but that was like that you're right like that like 90 percent of that episode was focused on the supporting female cast members you know some of the ones from um you know the shadow organization and then the other was the pair of princesses who were doing something i guess they're i guess everybody's in is going to the city for 
some kind of combat event or a blessing. I don't know what the fuck it is. Yeah, but... there's some ceremony that's supposed to happen in the sacred land. Right. Or something, but... It's uh, just an excuse to get everyone into a new environment since we've kind of run the... The, the school, school is fucking done for a Yeah, we, we've kind of run that one into the ground. And um, so now it's sort of like, all right, let's start, let's start a little country. fresh. Yeah, it's a whole other country, right. So in the beginning of the episode, we're on the train with Sid and the class president. Uh, and I like the recap that he gives where he, he sort of goes back over and like my... He was just having a good time. That, and... Somehow this girl became completely infatuated with him, because uh, mm-hmm. I guess he he claims he he didn't fully understand her personality, but now he's stuck in this um, cliche situation that he he doesn't want to get out of. I actually got a good I I like it when I get a good laugh more than a chuckle. I got a good laugh in the beginning when the scene where she's like cooing over him and holding his hand, and he starts vibrating it to try mm-hmm. to like shake it out without like making her aware and then when he gets up to pick up the paper to like run down the exposition of like why they're on the train and where they're going talking about the holy land she's on the side with her hand still in the position where his hands would be in between and she doesn't even notice and she just holds that for mad long and i'm like yo that is hilarious and then she locks in again i thought like that that was played up a little bit but then they pushed the gag down but they kept it going in the background so yeah. i've got i got like a laugh and then a, a small chuckle I'm like oh they're really going for it and I, that was kind of how i felt about a large part of this episode whether it's like that or him um running into uh was, what's her name is it it's not epsilon who's the writer um, uh gamma gamma yeah like we get oh we get... my god the names of the books Oh my god! I laughed. I'm saying oh. I got a good laugh. It was good. It was good. I liked it. I liked it. I liked it. There were there were two halves to that joke too because the one is the one that they show you, which is like, oh my god, she has just plagiarized all these stories that I told her that I grew up with, and that's like good for a couple laughs because a, it's like you know Japanese people being very proud of their culture. Like, of course, these would be like you know, the seminal work of anybody else ever heard them, you know? So that's, like, one side of it. And the other half of the joke, of course, is that, like, you know, what what's on the nose about, like, the titling and everything else. But what I especially... <laughs> what I especially appreciated about that whole scene was there's a part they, de- they don't touch on, but that he does kind of say he sat down and narrated all of those stories. So he yeah. told her the, the whole story of Dragon Ball, like, all this shit. And one five that had to have something. happened. Like one that's feast. funny. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> well, I mean, when you think of like that nigga and his personality, he's just like right. Like yeah. Just upset. Like what? What a what a incredibly nerdy thing to be doing. Like you get some hot girl who will listen to everything you have to say, and your choice is to like rattle off the full plot line to some comic book that you're obsessed with as a teenager. Like. Weebs can relate, I'm sure. I mean, done this. but the girls love it though, because what's gonna call it? There's that trend of girls showing off their nerdy husbands, and they're just like, "Prove to me that your husband won't cheat on you," and they go <laughs> and show all the shit. And it's kind of just like, oh, uh, you'd be surprised, especially. That's a, yeah, that's a World little backhanded, Warcraft. and I know I know how people get down, so that's not gonna. Yeah, yeah I was like, that ain't, that ain't gonna Warcraft stop people? nobody. Mm-hmm. Nah, 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 too many stories. So that so that little like sidebar of uh, of Gamma and then Sid like realizing what she did and then because because again he's so oblivious to like what's going on that these little things can pop up and his instant reaction is actually interesting because he has to like consume what the fuck is happening what bullshit is going down keep his cool and like act like he knew about it the whole time like when he gets there and he's like he gets a note like here's the mission that's happening and he's like uh, uh yes <laughs> yes <laughs> the the mission he couldn't even read the damn the what's the ancient text or whatever homegirl wait was like, could, oh, could he that? not read it or was he like I pretending he to read not read it. it maybe 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 i don't know 
I don't know if it he's works either way. Not. It's funny either way. Well, I just kept thinking, I was like, this nigga actually really doesn't know how to do a lot of shit. And he just like finesses his way through it. Especially with the, even at the school, he didn't really even know what to do with that situation with the artifacts. He kind of was just like, I'm just going to help her because like she going to do something. Right. He kind of pieced it together. I mean, one thing that, that they're kind of careful with in the story is that they make, they go out of their way to present Sid as still competent. Mm-hmm. You know, like when he does something, when he's in character, whatever he's doing is done pretty confidently. And, you know, if he, you know, when he is going on his soliloquies, whatever, he's kind of piecing together facts and he's not stupid. You know, he is a very like smart and over prepared kind of person. But the fact that he very rarely knows what is actually going on until it happens and yes. kind of just rolls with it is the like I, I don't know if I would prefer if they leaned in one direction or another like fully goofy on one end or like you know f- fully o- over prepared on the other some the gray area they play in with his character still leaves some like uncertainty so like when he runs into his people doing something in the field it you know, I could Im- I could imagine either way that like he's so smart he figures it out no, what they're up to. He's a fucking narcissist. He doesn't care what they're doing. Yeah, I think that's probably the better <laughs> the better description is that he d- kind of doesn't give a fuck. But you know, everything just seems to work out for him. Exactly. Like, yeah. You know, he's and just it, very he's very lucky. It's he's um, lucky and he has the power to make it work out if problems do arise. So some other thing I, I also like the the. Talk about setup and payoff. You the, there's the the boob gag before like that actually had the some hallway like hallway showdown. Yeah, like it it then became a like the sort of the punchline of the joke was like him praising her for in his own head because she doesn't. Know yeah, this. he didn't say shit out loud, but he was like, oh, no, yeah, she, she she takes pride. Right. <laughs> in <laughs> it's her like, magic. It's like yeah, okay. He's like you use a lot of slimes. Yeah. For that one. <laughs> I see what you were doing, girl. Um, so that was funny. And then to go back a little bit, you mentioned like so when you were watching the high the school arc, they actually there was a as you point out there was a reason for him like getting thrashed and like doing his little near death performance because it then wound up being getting paid off. You know when the the imposters attack the school and it's like he's I believe that he's very good at pretending like he's dead. Yes. Or, <laughs> like you know, I was, was it was worried. it necessary? I was Go worried ahead. he was gonna do I am atomic at the school, bruh. He could have. <laughs> he could have, <laughs> but I was just like, you can't do that at the school. You will destroy that shit, nigga. Like you already destroyed the whole neighborhood. Like chill out. But he did it. You don't give a fuck. Um, I I mean, even though the show is definitely like mid budget, like, when they fight, when they he when he does the confrontation, it looks great. It looks mm-hmm. great. It looks great. I I enjoy all of it. Um, and I would like more Alpha because I feel like if we got them, it's almost like he's the protagonist, but she's like a pseudo dual protagonist. I feel like we would know more about the Cult of Diablo stuff, but then maybe that would make the tone too serious. So, I mean, the, you're right. There's like a second show that you could tell that yeah. is completely played straight and it would be from the point of view of alpha and those inside the organization like i'm not saying i have no gags but yeah th- that th- this is sort of the the trick that's getting pulled because there's a story thread that's getting dragged along but it's not necessarily by our main character who is our you know our window into the world he's sort of along for the ride and if there's an opportunity to go basically live out some fantasy that he has some like nerd we and i wouldn't say like nerd shit because the stuff he's into is super fucking specific and weird you know like oh i want to be an npc i don't want to be a main character oh but then because that's all part of his eminence and shadow like, i can't concept show my actual power to the public right right that's all part of his concept of like it, he thinks it's really cool to just be a nobody who in actual fact is like this crazy you know superhero fighting against so evil then, cults and everything my other question is he still doesn't believe in the cult, does he? Or does he think that it actually has some, like, validity? Because I haven't really... I Personally, I don't understand if he still thinks that, like, this shit's still a game. And he's just playing with the government and not the actual cult. 
so that's what I think is the gray area. Because I, I, mm. my belief, and maybe there's a maybe the the manga is a little more explicit about it, or the light novel, I guess it. Whichever, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Whichever. My belief is that he is aware that there really is some weird shit going on, but not like subconsciously aware because Mm. if you, if you think about it, he's not a character who goes out and just, even though he did the, I am atomic shit, his goal is not to like wantonly kill civilians and whatever. Like it, he really wants to enjoy himself and so enjoying himself kind of means like in some way creating a reality where he can do whatever he wants. Like for example, so he, he's living in like a sense of like disbelief or just like, a little bit. Like remember in remember the episode where he um finds out that uh one of his subordinates had set up the store in town mm-hmm. and then he's up in the the the, the you know the, the mansion the on top super, of the building. Yeah. And then and in that moment like he said there was a line in there where he's like, oh, it's so nice that, like, they went out of their way to, like, set all this up for me. But then when there's, like, actual, like, real money or, like, or like a person is really trying to kill somebody, you know, like, at that point, he just reverts fully into the character and whatever he whatever he thinks his character is and, like, will we'll use what's in front of him. He will kill people. He'll yeah. murder people brutally. If the opportunity presents itself, but it's not like he's thinking, "Oh, this is an actor," right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He he's reacting to the the scenario he's in like it is real and treats it like it's real, but then kind of pulls back, you know, because he doesn't actually have all this very specific information or really a grand plan other than to have fun inside this persona. I don't really know. It's so strange, kind of. Um, balance to make because there are times when that concept should make the events of the story either feel a lot less important or feel kind of weird because if if everyone's an actor and all this stuff is being set up for him by his by his people then he shouldn't have he should be murdering anybody or he shouldn't go out of his way not to kill people like when in episode two when he goes and he like finds those bandits to test out his abilities yeah like if he was crazy and didn't give a fuck, he would just be killing anybody. But he, like, specifically is going after what he sees are bad people. But it just seems like oh. the details... The details of, like, why things are happening, he doesn't really follow or pursue. Yeah. You know? It's just kind of coincidence. Oh, look! A guy showed up in front of me who's super strong, saying evil stuff, and he wants to kill me. Time for me to flex. I think that's, like, kind of the mm-hmm. the vibe. Um, I guess the last thing is the lingerie scene. <sighs> I mean, <laughs> that shit. Honestly, I was kind of just like, "This is so ridiculous that I'm just gonna just I'm just gonna give into it. I'm just gonna give into it." From her clearly thinking about Sid, like she still is, she's still in love with Sid, mm-hmm. or she's in love with Sid now because when the the other girl visited her to ask if they were still dating, they panned to the pictures and she still had that picture of Sid sideways. So Mm -hmm. everywhere else in that room, you can't see that picture, but she knows where it's at and it's posted. Mm -hmm. So I was like, this girl still got feelings. Back from that episode, we get to this episode, she clearly still thinking about Sid from the lingerie to them talking about, oh, it feels great. It feels like you're not even wearing anything, girl. And blah, blah, blah. (laughs) And then they were like, oh, and then the, from the uh, from the older sister being like, I can see a part of you. I'm like, oh, God. Oh, goodness. Like, whatever. To the nonchalant, like, assistant taking the, like, the naked mannequin and being like, which That was, which one? that, I was like, you motherfuckers. <laughs> you motherfuckers. It was, I just, I just gave into it. I was like, I can't be mad at this shit. The one, no, 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 I'm lying. The one part I was mad at was, why do we have a wall bang scene? Oh, you don't why like the is, implied Yuri stuff for the... I was like, why is this here with the sisters? Like, what are y'all doing? That is pure fan service for everybody. For everybody. That hits, that hits all the groups. Everybody. Everybody. I literally was just like, now this I'm confused about because I just like don't know. But also that's not for me. So I was just yeah. like, okay. Okay, we go... What it, a little like... The iconic, like, 
listen yep. to me. But it wasn't. It just yeah. But the I, irony I is that it's set up in a way that actually is non-sexual. Like if you just went by the text, that's like the, yeah. you know the lines. Honestly, there's nothing actually sexual about what's happening, but it's framed in a way, and they give like you know the uh, you know embarrassment, like oh my god, you know whatever. It's framed like a Yuri scene, even though it's actually very much not. It's just we are having a very intense conversation about lingerie. Like that's what it is. I also really, really, and it's so random, but the gag of homegirl just always being clumsy gets yeah. me every fucking time. That is, yeah, and it's, it's thrown in there for, like, no reason. For no it's reason. Just... The, when they were taught, when it was reaching the climax of the school shit, and they were like, oh, she's already ready. And they don't even show her full body. They just show her feet and the ankles in the just, air, yes. just going down. I'm just like, yeah, just... I'm so sorry, but you're going to get me every time with that shit. It's, it's a good gag. It's just a good gag. It's funny. You know, the these characters are a little bit more than one-dimensional. You know, like... The, and we, we haven't can, seen you enough could... of them yet, though. Or at right, least like... Shadow Garden we have it. You can pick any one of the sh- the Shadow Garden women, mm-hmm. and you can say like two strong things that, that you've been given to understand who they are, mm-hmm. but you don't have a lot of like backstory or development. And so, for the most part, they're kind of there to fulfill uh, some narrow roles and not much else. But then when you get a little bit of time with them, there is some real. And I'm not, I don't mean this in like a depth kind of way. I just mean it in a, you know, doing the job. Like there is some real interesting like gags and things that you can do with the little bit that they have been sketched out. So yeah. I think that like they're fun in the limited doses that we get them. They don't overstay their welcome because if they're not going to write out a great character, the last thing you want is a thin character that's in your face all the time. I call that like the the Sakura problem, right? Oh, Where boy. there's not a lot. I mean, you know, people dump on that character all the time, but like, if you're being serious about what the issue is, the issue is that there's just not a lot of development given to her, but you're, but there's a, she gets a lot of screen time. And for not as a result, she gets overexposed. Like the things about that character that, that are empty and are, you know, trying to drag, drag you away from what's going on. Uh, are in your face front and center all the time whereas like an eminence and shadow pretty much there's like two or three characters we, we know anything significant about that we spend any time with it's like sid and then maybe the two princesses you know that's it um which i mean that oldest princess she's in for an ass whooping somebody gonna give it to her because she's like she's biting off more than she can chew and honestly right. they have a they this show loves off screen and niggas Mm-hmm. When the the named one, when they talked about like the named one guy, and then he showed up, and that like general guy came in there, right? And I was like, oh, okay, so he'll be able to hold him off. And then Sid leaves, and you hear the nigga die, like in yeah. the background. And I'm yep. like, oh, oh, okay. That was <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> that was that. Also, the the Shadow Garden girl with the the attendant, the dude in the red robe who like works in that like crew for the the crown princess oh How yeah she was like this nigga's almost dead i'm about to kill him and then Sid was like what are you doing <laughs> what are you doing what are you doing what are you doing and she yeah. was just like oh well, i'm gonna put him out his mystery. wasn't that like her, she said that, that was like her ex or something that or? was her ex or, but the, and that was another thing so i wanted a little bit more of that story because it looked like that was her ex but she became cursed while she was the fiance with him, like her body yeah. was dissolving. And then right. they showed Sid in the same shed, just just talking, just mouthing off after he fucking saved her. And I'm just like, of course, of course. That's so, that was so of fucking funny. Fucking course. <laughs> of course you did this with every single one of them where you were just like, I'm going to put on a show. Because. Yeah, and I and that's what I mean. Like there, there's a little bit that you can say that that's intriguing, or at least there's a couple of layers to all those characters. But because we don't spend very much time with them, it's not like they are developed. And so he, this this would be a problem. The problem would be like let's say you took Alpha, right? Yeah. Was the first supporting character that we meet in the new world. It, it, let's just imagine a version of the story where she's very present. You know, in every episode, as like you know, maybe she infiltrates. Which is what I thought Sid. we were gonna get. Yeah, it felt that yeah. way. But let's just say that that happened. But they never gave you any more information to add more layers. You're just getting that same character you met after he like 
brought her back from being a fucking whatever the fuck a, a demon slime ooze thing whatever the fuck she was let's say like you never got any more than just her infatuation with sid and then her competence as sort of like a leader of the organization that you get a character like that is very easily overexposed because there's no depth but you're constantly asked to invest in this character because they're getting screen time right yeah. whereas like the princesses both of them we know a lot about their personality relatively we kind of know their backstory leading up to where they were at as a character when we meet them they're in they have relationships that are kind of outside of the, our main character with each other they have motivations they've got goals they have complications they have you know other things so the point is that are these like the most well-developed you know women that i've ever seen in anime absolutely not nah. but there's enough there that if they were to be given more screen time it wouldn't you wouldn't feel like uh they were overexposed you'd be like okay if we get more screen time we're gonna learn more they're gonna develop things are gonna happen to them it's gonna change them yeah and this what the series does with almost all of its characters is if they're not going to do that you are not going to spend a lot of time with that character whereas like in the school arc the the scientist girl she got a whole she got a full character development three, three episodes damn near yeah. yeah we we learned kind of where she came from we learned about her trauma that made her the way that she was we learned about her relationship with her adopted father we learned about her mother getting murdered we've learned that the father that her adopted father was responsible for killing the mother but she ne never knew that it was him then sid uh, he's the knight, so he betrays her. Then Sid kills him in front of her, so now she has a revenge plot against him, but but against uh, Lord Shadow, yeah, not Shadow. against Sid. She's in love with Sid. So think all this stuff you've now set up a bunch of like emotional return points that you can pay off later on, and you feel like okay, I I understand who this character is a bit. Now you may think she sucks, but at least that's development. Yeah. The and others also, don't really get like that, so like we don't spend the time. And they're planting a seed for right. later because we don't know. I honestly expect this shit to get wild. Like I feel like it's a because it's so big, and I usually a lot of these shows, you know, they go from like light novel manga to anime for promotion wise. This shit ha already has a mobile game. So well, that's, that makes a lot of sense. So like, oh, well, yeah, because titty, 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 titties are yeah, like I mean, come multiple, on. multiple things. But um, yeah, I just, I think this might get crazy. No one has spoiled me in any way about it, so okay. I'm not really sure. But the fact that they're putting so much behind this, like they, they trust that this shit is going to be good. And you know what? It's probably, I should look at some of the sales for this shit. Like, what are the sales figures for this shit? Because... I don't I, whatever. Anyways. Yeah. I'm caught up. It's great. I love cool. it. Um next. So what the fuck is going on with Chainsaw Man? Oh, so much is going on in Chainsaw like, Man. Like what the fuck is going on? Clearly I'm not caught up. I'm gonna get caught up. But honestly, with this show. It's so crazy that like I've see I've been spoiled on a whole bunch of little shit that's happened and I'm pretty positive I'm gonna when I watch it I'm still gonna be like bitch what the fuck right. like what the fuck do we so, want to run down the Kobeni rabbit hole maybe not maybe not in, mm, in full but oh, you could give a preview of the Kobeni rabbit hole. okay so and that, this this is let let's say this is like fifty percent to do with the actual show and maybe like. You know, 50% with uh, the way people reacted. So, people who are readers of the manga, historically, and I'm saying going back to, like, when the when it was, like, popping, popping, like, a year or two ago, um, within that, that fandom, Kobeni was a very popular character. Mm. Um, and so much so that, like, she was sort of, like, the preferred waifu of the, you know of the series for fandom. some I would, not necessarily yeah. for me but it was like it was like a known thing that that was like people were into her and the way she's drawn is just like a cute girl now there are some feats that she was given uh over the course of the story that are another reason why people are really into her which is relevant to this this week's episode but one of the things that was always true about her character as described in the in the manga was she was super fucking annoying it's kind of hard to communicate 
what that means in text, but when they, you know, when they animated it and her, Mm -hmm. they made a choice to make her voice actor very annoying. (laughs) I guess it's very, like, very, like, screechy and, you know, just, like, uh, annoying. Just annoying as fuck. So there were a lot of people who, when they, when the, when the series started and her character comes on screen, she has a, uh, they're dealing with like the Infinity Devil, and there's a part where basically you meet Kobeni, she's super like nervous, yeah, and is very is that scared. When in the hotel, right? Okay, and the I way her VA her. communicates that is a lot of like stuttering and like frightful sounding, you know, vocal tics that are super fucking annoying to listen to. Like they're not cute at all. They're actually she got grating. Well for that. Exactly right. Yeah. The, 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 you know, there's there's acting happening. Yeah, people. She the, this <laughs> voice actress is acting. She's acting what the character is supposed to be. But for whatever reason, the Kobeni stands were were mad about it because because they they're, know where she's going. Already. They should know, but you gotta remember this is their queen. So you know, the, if it's if it, if she's annoying them, then clearly it must be a, an error in judgment by the producers. Not that they had a weird so expectation. So she has of, to be presented as the final product from the yes. beginning. Or that they, I don't think it's a case of like some people not fully understanding what it was that they liked. You know, because she's a cute character, like visually. But, like, the way with Chainsaw Man, you know, you can say this with almost every character in the series, they have, like, a really strongly, like, positive trait, and then they usually have a really strongly negative trait to balance it out, you know? Multifaceted. <clears throat> right, and it's done purposefully. So, like, in Kobeni's case, is that she's just fucking annoying to be around, but, you know, everyone thinks she's cute, and when she gets a nice outfit or something, like, which happens, I think, in uh, episode seven... Um, Mm -hmm. it's like, oh, okay, that's what they're talking about when, like, you know, she's kind of presented to be attractive. And people inside the, the, the show, the characters actually recognize that as well. Now, she also has some, like, really fucking cool feats that, uh, like, combat-wise. And so, if you're someone who thinks, like, her character design is cute, and, like, she's funny, the way she's using the show is interesting, and, oh, by the way, she can, like, get busy, then it's easy to be like, yo, that's my, that's my girl, I'm gonna stand for this cool but if you know that then don't act fucking surprised when the anime rolls along and it's like oh shit she is annoying (laughs) damn what (laughs) what did i expect i didn't have to listen like my waifus don't talk back to me now she's talking and it's like fuck this so they got themselves wrapped around that uh axle in like episode six and seven um and then this week uh is sort of the resolution to the sword or the katana devil fight and in okay. addition to that there's some cool shit that Kobeni does because her they go out of their way to like hide what her uh contractor Con- contract, is yeah and uh i mean she gets busy let's just be be keep 100 percent. i, I, I and managed so, to not see the whole fight I've, I've seen little tidbits like the very yeah. like two first two seconds but then after yeah. that, i'm like bye um and this is actually one of my favorite parts of the series that they're at right now um most of the stuff with the gun devil up until maybe like the end of the the gun devil arc i think is like i won't say it's like peak because there's actually way cooler stuff that happens later on but Mm -hmm. it's like to me if you get into chainsaw man you got into it because of this part because this is the first time when um you see the seeds that were planted in say like the first couple of episodes really bear themselves out in dramatic ass ways like even if you go back to the reveal in um in episode eight where you find out that the katana devil is the son of the mobster who died um in you know who got uh i guess yeah technically, in the first few episodes yeah they got yeah over. yeah denji killed him but it wasn't like he wasn't trying to murder this guy he's this is, this is just how he got roped into this him. yeah yeah he, he betrayed him so like that being cool then what's her face dying um to sacrifice herself to her devil like, people were not, you know, who were not, like, readers were very shocked by that. Um, so, it's, you know, it's just, like, when all the dramatic shit, you're like, oh, right, we can lose main characters that we're getting into. We, we can get some really hype-ass fights. There's, like, long-term storytelling here. Things tie together. Like, it's cool. 
So I think this is a, a really fun part of the early series to latch on to. And I think this is technically around like chapter 20. 20? Fi- somewhere between wow. 15 and 20. Yeah. Okay. Well then, hey. Yeah. Cool. So it's cool. So I'm, I'm, I'm just like, you know, I've always been a proponent of... Of this series in general. I think Chainsaw Man is super cool. So as far as like where it's at right now, um, do you think that the adaptation is still taking it in a more grim manner and the comedy is more like second seat? It's a good question. Because the, like the three big like comedy moments in the early, um, the first couple arcs are... Mm-hmm. The introduction of power, which I think mm-hmm. they have, was has absolutely played for like, you know, ridiculousness. That, yeah, it's ridiculous, yeah. and like, you know, that's where you kind of get a hold of Denji as like, um, like a like I don't want to say he's he's horny, but it's more like he's uh, he he's very simple minded, and they played that up that like we talked oh, about, like damn. it's it's grimmer than you would expect. He's got um. It. Then I think the next big comedy moment is like him getting puked in his mouth, which they, that one was funnier. I think it was even, it was funnier in the anime than it was in the manga for, Good. you know, gross out humor stuff. Um, but then the very next episode is like very serious and it, it is to set up like a, a character death. So it's like, okay. Um, but overall, I think they're keeping the, the interesting tone and vibe to all this shit. Okay. So I'm 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 cool with it. I don't know about other people being cool with it, but I'm cool with it. Okay. All right. Well, let's go on to the weekly main character. Um. The um, Suleta. They showed their ass this week. It was a, it was great. It was fucking great. I I knew from the moment that they said team battle, I was like, it's one v six. It's one v six. Well, okay. it would eventually but wait, get let me, there. Let me, but... let me, let me, let me, let me get to my girl Choo Choo though. Yeah, right. Choo Choo get getting feet. She did what I love. What I love. She said, "Oh, I can't snipe you. I'ma hit you with the fucking rifle, nigga." <laughs> I was like, "This is this is my character. This is my character." Because what's gonna call it? Uni also does that in Xenoblade Chronicles Three. She snipes oh. the nigga, and then she throws the sniper rifle at them. So it's kind of just like, That's funny. yes, like this is this is this is a sniper. Like this is like I shoot you from far away, but like if you want to get close, like we can we can do it. Which I was surprised that Choo Choo was the sniper. If anything, I thought Choo Choo was gonna be like the gorilla, like pop up, boom, pop up, but like in your face. And also kudos to her because she took on she lasted against Shadiq. For a minute, like she didn't just get like popped immediately, but okay, yeah, that that was one of my like favorite moments from from the fucking episode. Like, use the sniper rifle. Like, if you can't shoot the nigga, hit the nigga somehow. Did you notice that she was basically um, in this fight the Android Seventeen from like the Terminator Power? <gasps> oh. Because it's the same thing, right? You think you knock this character out, you put your main character yeah, in peril. and they show up, yes. right? And they were fucked up, but like Ooh, the final blow is actually yeah, at the end. Yes. yeah, beautiful, just b- yeah. beautiful music to my fucking ears. Honestly, I'm so afraid that this character is gonna die. Like I'm like they're making <laughs> me love her so much, where I'm just like, when she dies, I'm gonna be mad. Like I'm gonna be. They're not gonna. Mad. I don't think. I don't think she's on the chopping block. Um, we speculated last week that Gel would join, and it didn't happen. But yeah. they set it up. But they set it up for basically that to happen later. So yeah. I'm fine with that. Honestly, but the I thought interesting... that he was gonna make it happen this episode. I thought that he was gonna run and basically be like, "Swap me in, bitch." You're right, because they've they have they've set a precedent for that happening. Yeah. I'm still confident that that will occur before the first season is over. Maybe in the next challenge when like you know. All, all hope is lost. But the other side of that is that they're setting... You're worried about Choo Choo dying. I'm not worried about that. Gal's going to die. Because <gasps> they're going to set his ass up as like the puppy dog. Oh, And you know no! they love to kick a puppy. 
because he's been through so much shit and in this yeah. be a moment he might be the first death on school on the school campus maybe and it could happen much later again cuz there there are things that we've predicted oh, obviously yes. that we don't know so like is there going to be a time skip i think there will be there, there may I, not be one i think i think there needs to be one like for sure yeah. i think it's i think a lot of the seeds are being planted right now and we're i think we're seeing like a lot of precursors to how fucked up they're going to take it once we do the time skip. So I really hope there is one. But prosper a bitch, keep them tears. I don't, I don't, I don't trust you no more. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Why I, should you? I don't trust her no more. When she, when that tear came down, I was like, I don't think that was a tear for like Suleta. I think that was a tear for I can get my revenge, bitch. Like yes, this is the uh, yeah, like. Like, that's what I'm saying. I, of all the wacky theories that I have attached myself to, and again, I, I don't read anything anywhere, so it's like, this is just my belief mm-hmm. based on if I was going to write a Gundam-ass Gundam story, what would I do? And it would be make Suleta a clone, and therefore all the reactions that uh, uh, Prosper is having is never to Suleta, it's always to Ariel. Yes! That's what I would do. I'm not saying uh, that's what it is, but that's that's what I would do because you can you can do that thing where if you want to recontextualize, you know, if you're gonna say that you you have a, a big crazy event, a time skip, and then you want to recontextualize everything that happened before. If you do some kind of reveal where it's like Suleta was the disposable one, and every time you know, and again, like Prosper refers to both her and the machine daughters. as her daughters, where it's like. Does that actually make sense, given no. what we are learning about, like the G- the witches and like all this shit? Like, it's really kind of weird. Um, so, that said, I I mm-hmm. I don't think those tears were for what Suleta accomplished. No, it wasn't for what Suleta. Which I did uh, I did give her her kudos though, because when Ariel wasn't active, she did she held out for a minute. So yeah. like she is a pilot. Like she can't yeah, yeah, do yeah. that shit. Um but yeah, like everyone else, like, you know, being in the Meccas, I was just like, okay, that's cute. Ha 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 he he, you niggas are done for. But another highlight for me with the episode, of course it was, because you know how I love my rom coms, is Shadiq's homegirl they seem to be like, you went after my 12th backup boyfriend. That was hilarious. And then homegirl was like, I didn't even go on the date, bitch. Like, yeah, it's like, I don't even know who you're, about? what are you talking about? What are you talking about? And she was just like, you don't, you know who that, you get Tom, blah, 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 blah. I was like, this is perfect. Like, this like random little storyline. Because she said it up earlier. She was like, I got you, bitch. I got you. I'm going to get your ass. I'm like, what's right, you doing, yeah. Girl? I was like, I knew that they were going to be like, yeah, the big girl took her man. Like, I think that's like a funny ass, like, trope to do. It's very much a uh, U.S. like rom-com kind of yeah. thing. Where, like, the girl that you don't think is like, you know, the hustling, these, hustling these niggas back, you know, in the back. It's like, it's the big girl who's not like drawn to be cute or whatever. She just, you know, she gets busy. But yeah. like, they didn't go all the way with that. They kind of just like implied that she made a pass at this guy. When it was um, the guy who made the pass. In the oh, sorry. Place. Yeah, the guy made the pass. Right, right, right. So, like, I have... This is not a criticism at all. It's just, like, something I, I like pointing out. None of these are what I would really qualify as, like, great stories for women. Like, they don't pass oh. the Bechdel test because they're but two women are arguing teens. over a man. These are teens, right? though. Yeah, they're teens. But, yes, I was going to go right there. But this is, like, high, this is Gundam High School. Yeah. Right? And so this is like some high school level stupid shit. And I like the fact that the, you know, we talked a little bit about this when we were discussing Eminence and Shadow, when it comes to like the dimensions of a character versus how much screen time they have to carry versus the quality of the storytelling, you know, or what their role is. This is a, that's a gag, right? That well, little. You know what? If we do get a time skip, if they bring this little storyline along with the time skip, where, like, it was funny now, but in the future, like, homegirl reads her and she's just like, you still stuck on this dumb shit. Like, we're in a war. Right. Like, if they did something like that, I'd be like, holy shit. Like, actually, I really, 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 like, that would make sense to me, basically being like, everyone has grown but you, bitch. Like, you still on this stupid shit. 
Like, but yeah, high schoolers. I mean, I could also see like little little ways to do that if they don't go that far. For example, if you want to build up those two characters as having um, a rivalry, you know, a rivalry yeah. but the rivalry is sort of um, maybe one step removed from it from being a gag, where the joke is that this traditionally non-attractive girl is actually very successful with men, and mm. they are constantly inadvertently competing over the same dudes. Um, even as, Without as her adults, trying. yeah, with one of them not trying and the other one like obsessed about it, I'm fine with that being like a little joke. If you want to maintain that, um, relationship, because that's my point. If you go back to Eminence in Shadow, just for a second, most of the supporting cast are women and most of those women are tropes. They're not yes. supposed to be any deeper than that. And they're kept largely off screen when they don't have anything to do so that they don't get like overexposed because it's kind of not a serious story to begin with so you don't need them to you know have big tragic backstories and blah blah, blah. they can be off to the side till you need to, to have the joke the joke is based on information we have in the right the the joke is based on info we already know so you don't have to explain anything you do your gag and then you get out of there which from mercury is not uh is, is not a joke I mean, there's a serious story that is being told, but there are gags that are built into the, you know, the method of storytelling. And what's important is that every character that we meet that ever interacts with any other character ostensibly has a relationship with that character. And it's a sta- it's a relationship that's not static, so it changes over time. And as you learn more about each character, you can actually deepen the re- the the representation of the other characters who are not there because now you have more context for that existing relationship like when we for example an easy one is the in the earth dorm the two boys right the dark the dark skin one and uh the one that's like money hungry yeah i don't even remember their names but when you're introduced to them you just see that they're kind of they're they're homies they're kind of chilling together when they speak on screen one speak of their priorities and exactly yeah. One speaks and the other speaks. Then all it takes is one scene where you find out that they're actually in disagreement over some ideological thing. And it's been brought to a head and they are clashing. they haven't even discussed amongst themselves. Exactly. And it's not a long... You know, it wasn't like, you know, uh, the the whole episode. It was probably like one minute of like dialogue and facial expressions. Now we know so much more. Right. And so that's the same thing. I that the, what they do in Witcher Mercury is that they let you um, build up these casual relationships with these other characters. Like you see them going to lunch together, or when the ones that are actually participate in the live battles, you know, based on their roles, you can sort of see that they are working and living and you know being kids together at the same time in the same place. It feels more like these are friends. Mm-hmm. And then when something important happens, it all gets filtered through your, the audience's understanding of what those relationships are. So if those two had a falling out, let's say like what we guessed is that maybe there's going to be some inciting event. The groups are going to get split up into like two different factions and then they're going to go their own separate way. That split is way more meaningful when you know a lot of this information about how they get on, like what if the big girl and the dude, the girl from Shadik's group actually wind up on the same side, there's a mm. dynamic that you already have built up over what is essentially a joke, you know, but it works. Now we know a lot about these two characters and, and how like it, a legitimate scene with yeah, the future. Yeah. Where, like, one homegirl is, like, she's so nonchalant, like, she's not self-conscious, she doesn't even <gasps> oh know God, she's oblivious, or... and the other one is, like, so crazy, boy-hungry, and, like, cares about her appearance, and, like, pays attention to all these little details, and, like, the fact that the other girl doesn't even, like, notice or care can get on her fucking nerves, it right? That's the beginning of a friendship in the future where, like, homegirl actually ends up just going insane from the boy craziness, and the other one is just, like... I, let me bring you down to earth, girl. Right, right. right. Or that the, that even their like banter is yeah indicative of a actual friendly. Re- so you could. I'm not saying that happens, but you can see how if you're starting to plot out but depth see, for these the thing, characters. Though. Yeah, this, the series in and of itself has so much potential, just from like all over the place. We spent the past what like 
five to eight minutes talking about two side characters. Yeah. We didn't, we didn't even get into Saletta. the actual heat in this episode. Ooh, the, 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 yo, what you deserve, nigga. Bro, that Let, shit with the, the tomatoes. The equivalent, okay, the like the analogy to like real life. Well, that's the thing. So me, myself, I didn't catch the tomatoes. Oh. A lot of people caught the tomatoes. What I caught was the Shadik basically, which is like regular niggas in everyday life, posturing. Doing all this shit when at the end of the day, all you have to do is just be honest. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is just be honest. And the sooner you do it, the better the result. And this nigga literally said it at the last, at the, the, oh, you know, I just, I just actually liked you and I just wanted to be with you. It's over. You did all this shit. All this shit. You don't like her. You wanted to manipulate her. You wanted to mani- you wanted to own her. You didn't like her because if you actually liked her, you would have respected her and actually like went forward with the relationship on equal terms. You didn't want the relationship on equal terms. You want the relationship in a I have power, but I want you to think that you have power also, but I actually control it. She didn't. She didn't want to put. It's me, Irene. She's not gonna put up with that shit. And she smelt his shit from literally like light years away. So. The way that this shit came together at the end, to the point where they panned away and that nigga was gone out the fucking door, I was mm-hmm. like, "Yeah, that's life. You fucked up. You give up. You gotta give up. It's over." And I like it because you can read that scene in other ways as mm-hmm. well, or not just that scene, but like even the contextualization of the relationship. Because I agree with you, like that. I think that's the message that they were going for. But when I was watching it, like what I took away from it was the idea that. Shadik is a coward and it's something that goes back to what one of his um um friends was saying how Shadik they were commenting on how like um he very rarely like does do like the way he does duels and and approaches it yeah no he uses other people and they said specifically he's very cautious about like when he goes when he sticks his head out to do anything and when I combine that with like his interaction, both of his main interactions with Mirene, what I took away was not only you know because Mirene has that line where she says, "You're just like my you you are like my father and the other people in the company. You just wanna you just want control." And then they pan to his face and he's like he's taking it, but I also think like he wanted to say something else. Which oh, and then you the get scene the line where he like moved and was like, "Oh, yep." Yeah. And then the and then you get the line where he asks her, you know, if I had just came straight out and challenged to be your groom, like this, and said I'll save you, then then you know, like this would have, this would have never had to happen. We but then had she basically, plot. right? And then and then she, her response to that is basically, well, that you missed, that was you had a window to do that a long time ago, and you didn't do it, and now I'm done. Now we're going. Now we're doing some other shit. So and then she cuts the the. The Which could green you imagine, tomato. This would be a completely different fucking show. Right. Oh my god. So should so I what I liked about that was that you know it gave Shadik multiple layers. It, just his relationship yeah. with Mia Rene. more than just like oh and I covet this whatever woman. Whatever happened with Homegirl? I forgot her name. Mechanical Girl from Earth. Oh oh um. Because we saw a different side to him there when the yes. way he was speaking to her. Yes. Like they yeah because uh. When they were outside, and she was like, "Did you say he, something like you don't have?" He was like, "A go between way. should not ask questions or some shit." Yeah, like that. I I really like Shadik's character because he is an archetype of the you know the, the 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 lover not taken right that things could have gone a different way if he had been better when he needed to be better. You know, like I don't look at him as like necessarily a bad guy because a lot of what the show is about is the youth looking at the world that was created by adults and rejecting it in some way or another. Well, you know? I also and... think that he's a very lonely person. Yes. Because yes. they highlight the scenes where whenever he's talking to someone, whenever they show Shadik like moving and he's not facing someone, his face immediately becomes just very solemn and like mm-hmm. just like just icy like not in a cold way like oh i'm trying to get you away but just in a just like a 
Like no no expression, no nothing. And then uh, they even highlighted that where the one scene where he was like moving through the colony and he ran into someone and he had to like snap that shit back. And it wasn't like yeah. aggressive, but he basically was like, oh, da da da, and it just looked. It was a completely. It's like code switching almost. Yes. Like he's literally code switching his way through life, and he's not being his actual self. And we don't yet have, like, the full understanding of his relationship with his... Yeah. It seems like his adopted father. Yeah. But th- what we know and what the show has gone out of its way to tell us, like, sketches a really interesting portrait of a character. So what do we know about Shadik? We know that he's an, he was an orphan. Um, and so his real parents ostensibly... We from where? We, yeah, we don't know from where. So we know that, Earth. like, from, a chi- from early childhood, he was incredibly driven to get out of the situation that he was in. And it t- and he was clearly very talented. Um, I'm not sure if it, what his talent is yet, but it seems like it's business and mobile suit related. But we I don't know if, if it's like you know why was he picked out of that orphanage? Why did he get the patronage of one of the most powerful people in this you know universe of you know corporate whatever? And then how did he kind of get to the role that he's in? I don't know the answer to any of that, but we know that. Because he is so driven to get what he wants, that he has these two kind of dueling personalities where on the one hand, he is very clearly a sensitive individual who wants to change things in his own mind for the better. But on the on the other hand, he's also arrogant and domineering and manipulative and whatever sensitivity he has to other people like he has a because it seemed like him and me arena had a very close connection yeah before the major events of the story that we meet because they're already on the outs by the time before suleta, suleta shows up yeah and i presume that has to do with with uh shadiq kind of going along with me Irene's father's and the benaret group and the Benner group yeah. and kind of instead of like you know because he's an ins- he's working the inside lane he kind of wants to take over his father's and transform you know, it into what he thinks it should be exactly yeah. you know and so that's good and he's good at it so like it's not just that you know he has that ambition he's also clearly capable of doing it and so you could imagine another world he's a kind of a fallen protagonist right where he, he's got a lot of the traits that the that the protagonist should have, but he has, say, like a fatal flaw. So maybe the fatal flaw is him being overly cautious or the fatal flaw is him not being able to respect the wishes of other people because, you know, he's got this way that he wants to do things and is both stubborn and and willing to essentially, like, hurt other people to get what he wants. And so then that plays into all those scenes that we get with Miorine because in another world, he'd be Suleta. Whoa. And all the women who are around him, who are like into him, they all see that he is this like kinder, caring person. But at the same time, like, you know, he's not going to give them back what they want out of him either. No. So I like that. I think that's a great, it's not like, you know, Shakespeare, but that's like a level of complexity. That you can that you get with not a lot of screen time. Like and Shadik actually, basically got like one episode, this last episode, where he had a lot happening, but everything else was kind of parsed out in small bits. I think like, they've over done the... a really good job with all the antagonists so far. Yeah, yeah. Like, all of them. And Shadik is the the best of all of I and, and by like the way they were building it up. If Mirene chooses the wrong path, you know, whatever the whatever the She's going choice back she's to Shadik. Got, Exactly. We've already set up the fact that he wants the Gundarm Corporation. He's got the money. He's clearly going to move against and his dad. And if there's a dad. schism between she and Suleta in which right. way to go, Shadi right. is going to have the money and everything else to go and against then a, him. Because Suleta has And then Ariel, emotionally, no we've already established that he would very easily now that he knows better, try to step into that role of me Irene's supporter and protector and everything else but you know he's flawed so if he were to do that it it would have the appearance of all the things that maybe so me Irene would want thinking but it, that like the time skip is going to be suleta as a fugitive running away possibly. from all them niggas i mean because that's a very gundam thing to do right it is, like it is, yeah it is but the setup for it is just 
it's extremely plausible with it. There's so many ways they can go with this. Just yeah. yeah. So again, I'm not saying that this is going to happen, but I'm just pointing out that good gonna, character de- out of one of these episodes, y'all, we're gonna get it. We're gonna get yeah. it. We're gonna get but, it. But, but it's a it's a result of what I would qualify as very good character development or characterization in general because it would a story could support that kind of a thing and it wouldn't be a stretch you don't have to like you know bend or twist any characters to get them into that that position yeah you know and again i you know if you watch enough gundam there are some tropes they like to reuse they love the the sort of quasi rebel group with our main character and the titular gundam Friends to enemies. They, right yeah yeah so and we have a char she just hasn't revealed her teeth yet. Right, right. And so let his mom as the char clone, yeah. like in a in a series that is like high school Gundam. So somebody's mom is char is like hilarious. Like just as so a his concept. Mom's the it's... Karen. Someone. Yeah. Right. Prosper's the Karen. Of Gundam. <laughs> That's like, so she, funny. We're waiting for the Karen to appear. We're waiting. So we gonna Karen get is shit. like is like the the version of the suit that her mom controls. I bet she controls it with her mind or something. Is it gonna be like a Sazabi looking well, red red that, suit? Did you see the thing where um she was like it looked like she was analyzing the battle through her like head thing? Yeah, I I noticed that for like a split second, and I was like, it didn't look like it was the guy on the screen that was like sitting next to her doing it. It looked like she was like. Focusing in on like Shadik's suit or something like mm-hmm. that. So I am, I am so. It, so the, there's a darker. I don't even know if I want to bring this up. So there's a, there's another possibility that if the, if this was like if Tamino was writing this shit, uh, that they could go, which is that um. Let's let let's just stay on like Suleta is actually a clone. Yeah. Ariel okay. is the focus. Okay. okay so what okay. that would mean is that Ari is actually dead. Yeah. Right? So if Ari's if Ari died. So Ari is not Ariel. No. Well no no. The or the, the Gundam could be her, but then the the uh the I don't know how you say this, but like the the, the twist is that the red Prosper stripes will, are her blood or some shit like that. Well, the, the, that Prosper wants to mass produce her dead daughter's soul in a bunch of like mind controllable mm-hmm. Gundam units, mm-hmm. and that's like the final mm-hmm. act. This is, is very on brand. L- literally, Suleta killing herself and her mom. Very on brand. Very, very, <laughs> on, and then going insane. Yeah, then, then going insane. Going right. insane. Or there would be there the, would be a mind break, and yeah, then that there would be, would be the end a hard. There would be a. Mi- Oh my God! It would be so like think, Kakumeki Valkyrie. We're not gonna. Yes, yeah. Ah! But we're not gonna do that. I think that we're going in a. We will end in a more wholesome place than something quite Are that you dark. Sure? Are you sure? Well, well, that's what I'm saying. If Kakumeki Tavita was writing was it, then no, I would like, not be very sure of that at all. <laughs> wow, Kakumeki was very much so just like, oh, you're a vegetable. Okay. Bro, when they showed that motherfucker at the end of the series in that fucking temple, just catatonic, and he's got these bad bitches trying to like protect and now his you body. In my head, I could, I could, absolutely. If the clones, the airy, if all of this shit, even even if two, maybe even if one of these things, I feel like it's going to be a snowball effect. Like we're getting right. like little itty bitty shit. I feel like it's just gonna eventually just be like. It's actually extremely fucked. Like everyone's yeah. fucked. We already like, got a a, a a person getting literally vaporized, vaporized, and yeah. flushed out of space toilet. So yeah. it's like, like this is not oh, and unusual. You know what? They have no problem. <clears throat> well, no, he wasn't a clone. They like plastic surgeryed him or whatever so it was. Like, they, but yeah. didn't. But wasn't it that they that they did something to his brain so that they can yeah. like share memories or something so like flash? If homegirl can do that. What's to say Prospera isn't hasn't already been doing it? Because they already imply that like the other witch was just copying what she was doing, yes. and she felt su- And the, when they when she ran to Prospera, she was like, "Yo, like I I what we're do what what we're doing is fucked up." And Prospera's like, eh, <laughs> "Whatever, girl." Like, girl, I've been I still I've been getting I've been getting dirtier than you. So like, what you, what's what's going on? Yeah. I, by the way, there has to be a payoff for Alan. So I feel like all the stuff we went through with that bit. Has oh. got to come back, and it can't just be that, like, oh, you know, this maybe one character is pretending to be another like, one. Maybe they're like digitized consciousness, and maybe he comes back in that way. But I did the I. There's definitely going to be 
a confrontation with Suleta figuring out that the A line that is the real A line is not the A line that she knew, that's gonna yeah. be a problem. And honestly, I would be absolutely shocked, but absolutely pleased if that comes to her developing a friendship with the real A line. That's if, possible. If they finesse that, I would actually be very, very impressed. Like, no, it's su- it's super possible. It's also possible that it could happen through f- the Faract like Gundam yeah, itself. Yeah, yeah. So this is my thing with this episode. Them nigga Choo Choo's getting a Gundam. She's getting. Oh a duh! No, she'll get like the heavy arms one. She's or the she's sniper. getting a Gundam. Yeah. I just don't know how they're going to make it work for everyone else for Suleta yet. There's going to be some kind of breakthrough because of what Suleta just did this episode. Like I'm, sure. I'm confident of that. But what is the breakthrough and what's the design? Like, Are we going to talk a little bit about the, the Gundam dance, that fucking precious dance that that girl did? When she got out the Gundam on the fucking head? I'm so tired of that fucking dance. I'm so tired. <laughs> they did the same shit in that video. I cringed. I was like, what are you doing? It's it's giga cringe, but it works because it is. Yeah. Because if you think she's a precious little snowflake, though, now you've got her doing the most cringy shit. Ever and you gotta you know you gotta give it up to him for that one. Girl, I literally I um that was actually a part where I was like, should I fast forward? Because I, I actually hate this. I, I wasn't I like a fan this. of the dance, but like I knew immediately once I saw it, like this is going to captivate a lot of people. It's gonna be on TikTok eventually. Um, it's it's uh, whether yeah whether it makes a trend or not. I think it's a very endearing. Well, no, thing I think they this... also now that you say that they're probably doing that as like you know you know, a mirror to our shit where it's kind of just like eventually a whole bunch of people are going to end up start doing that dance when the, when the company becomes super fucking popular. (laughs) Right. I think, I think it's just a, it was cute, but ultra cringe, like no question about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we, we, we spent a lot of time on Gundam because it deserves it. Mm -hmm. Um, there were a few other things this week. Um, spy family was just, Oh, I love Shonen tennis. Super fun. Super, Super fun. fucking loved it. Honestly, they were the doing their Prince of Tennis of episode. Call. That shit was crazy. So I have never watched Prince of Tennis, so I didn't want to say that. But I was thinking, I was like, is this what Prince of Tennis is like? Because yeah. I love, I loved it. And I even respected the siblings because I was like, the, like when Homegirl did like the whip racket, I was like, I gotta give it to her. Like that requires some <laughs> coordination because like that that was kind of lit. I'm not gonna lie, but. Overall, just the whole episode was cute. I'm not... I actually liked how, like, you know, Nightfall's machinations, like, in the my kind of stuff, that was the forefront of the episode, but it wasn't so permeant. Like, it wasn't so just, like, all over the place where I was like, okay, I'm tired of this shit. Like, I don't want to hear about her, blah, blah, blah. It was more so of her not realizing it, but, like, seeing Lloyd's point of view of what the fuck she's doing like the point where she was so obsessed with like putting on this facade that she didn't even notice her fucking hands like yes and shit like that. i really really like the subtext in this because it on the surface it's like a very like it's just like a parody episode yeah yeah, yeah but yeah, yeah. there's some things that they point out here that go back to like um so for example as you point out, like Lloyd was even noticing that, like, like so, so Nightfall was losing it, and mm-hmm. it like her her grip on reality, her sort of professionalism as a spy. She like because she's so obsessed with becoming his wife. Yes, but it but one of the little pieces of information that we get in the episode is that. It might not, I mean, it's not something they say, but it might not have been an accident that she wasn't available for Operation Strix when it happened. Because Lloyd gets informed that she that she actually might be, yeah. uh, you know, something's up with her. And so that's interesting in and of itself, that this was not, like, the way they play it off, it was like, oh, well, I happen not to be here. Man, that sucks. Like, no. And you know what? Maybe. We might find out further down the line from Handler basically being like, I had a feeling that this was going to end this way or like be worse than this. So that's why I didn't put her on in the first place. Right. Um, I also like that uh, Nightfall does not take kindly to Anya. <laughs> uh, but, you know. Oh, to Anya. Yeah. Yeah. Anya. 
I mean, that that is what it is. To be honest, I really enjoyed the excessive Sakuga shit. Where yes. When she first started playing and she was doing backflips to pop that shit back. I was yes. So excessive, but absolutely on brand. And I was surprised that um we didn't get a a a your horror scene of her like serving the ball and like oh my god. killing one of them. Oh my god. I expected that to come, but I was like, oh okay, you know, that's cute, whatever. But I do like how they are like it on the side, like building up your and Anya's relationship. Because um Lloyd is gone like so much of the time. So they have no choice but to be together. And I feel like that might come into it in the future. Cause they definitely have like highlighted it a few times, but I definitely feel like it might get to the point where their bond ends up being better than Lloyd's because Anya is adopted, but no one knows that. Right. And again, Anya is the only character that knows what everybody else is doing and thinking. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, her motivation to succeed is not, you know, uh, what's the right way to say it? Like, cause like, like your just wants to be able to like live uh, the lifestyle that she has and knows that if she doesn't, you know, maintain this relationship, then that that's a humongous failure and then she all you know starts to get feelings for everyone involved and she's not a bad person but like i think the nightfall in the last two episodes is a very useful counterpoint because you know all jokes aside with all like the the you know tennis and and wild and wacky shenanigans the thing that's really being communicated here is that Nightfall misunderstands what is important about being a spy. Yeah. And so she thinks it's all like, you know, technique and perfection and everything else. But what Lloyd, what makes him successful and what kind of makes that family work as part of Operation Strix is that they are all humans at the end of the day. Mm. So Anya brings out the, the humanity stuff. in your... So Your and Anya bring out the humanity in Lloyd. And so all the things that Nightfall is like, this is making you weak. Like, remember when she's like, uh, oh, I've talking about like, smile like this. Right. Uh, or when, when she's thinking about like, uh, if, how she would train Anya for tennis. Yeah. It's like, but that wouldn't be good for a child. And for the mission. And for the mission. But she assumes that that's, you know that that not doing that is like the sign that Lloyd is slipping and you're is a terrible, you know, wife yeah. for this mission. Yeah. So, anyway, I I just like this one a lot. Um, it's one of the funnier parts of the manga. Now, this is one of the arcs that they definitely shortened. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, they absolutely shortened this one. Um, and it was fine because it's a. Uh, developing a side character but it's not necessarily directly related to the main uh, the main plot but even but. so i think this is it's definitely it's entertaining enough where i'm like i don't even really care i feel like nightfall is definitely going to be integral to the plot going forward yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, definitely. like it, i think this is a really good introduction arc for anime only for my position right um, um blue lock blue lock um evolve niggas like yes like make it work make it work i i actually love the theme of the episode i actually liked oh my god when that nigga Yo. elbowed that nigga in the fucking throat i was Bruh. like oh i was like we could oh. get penalties now <laughs> oh yeah i was like yeah not even get them but just the fact that i was like that is that a regular penalty in i in if tennis, you elbow someone in the throat, fucking football. if you it's not like a flop or something that then it's uh you would get red carded out of a game. Yeah, but like, I thought I was like that's pretty bad, and that nigga just got like a you do it again you're out. It's like no he should be out immediately. Yeah, no I I uh, when I played soccer I remember there was a game we had where the the we were playing a suburban team and they were saying some racist shit on the field. And uh, mm. my captain fucking uh, punched this dude in the face and got red carded out of the game. But like, we didn't give a fuck. Cause it's, it's talking a lot of shit. So yeah, you get you get thrown out of a game pretty easy doing stuff like that. Wow. So <laughs> yeah, it was that. But then I also 
I really, really enjoyed how they brought, like how they highlighted everyone's evolution. So um, muscle brains, I was little, not muscle brains, but just like muscle guy. My immediate thing was, nigga, you just gonna have to, you got to increase your range. You just, you just yep. have to. You just have to. You don't have a choice. But I also really, 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 really loved how Bakuda finally got. Thank you. I was like, come on, we gotta My talk about that shit, nigga. My man, one v one the whole squad. solo, solo the whole fucking team, solo them, and two of the main three embarrassed them niggas. Yeah, I loved it. I was like, finally, this like he's because he's been in the background since since after episode one, basically. He's his fucking stepovers and shit. He was just fucking squashing it. All in them niggas. So then everyone else got inspired. And he said to himself, he was like, it don't matter if you fucking like drown my ass out. Because everybody else is hyped up now. Like you got to deal with yeah. their asses. So <laughs> the highlight, the highlight of the episode for me. And it wasn't the Chigiri shit where he was just like, oh, this nigga's good at burst speed. But he's not good yes. at long range speed. The highlight for me is when he scored that goal and then turned around and started pointing to them niggas. It was no. like, what about it? What about it? You couldn't, yeah. get, you couldn't catch me. You couldn't catch me. That was my favorite part because I was like, this nigga's talking shit. Like, he didn't even say anything. Yeah, he All he did was turn around shit. and just was like, what's up? What's up? What's up? I loved it, but then I also loved the fact that, like, they have to analyze their opponent's abilities. And, of course, Isagi is going crazy in his head. So, eventually, you know, next episode, he might pop off and, you know, but roar. But we're going to see. Because this team is going to show up again. Because they're they're, mm-hmm. they're the top with them. So, well, not with them. But, like, they're the top team in their <clears> cell. <throat> so, that team is going on regardless. So, I don't know, maybe the... I didn't really remember how the rankings were set up, but, like, if they They tie haven't them, lost the game. Huh. So but like, then... No, they... Well, they're good. They have to lose this game. Well, then, yeah, but that's the thing, though. I think it's the top two teams, so... If, oh! Oh, I thought it was just the top one. No, it's it's the top two teams, so... Then, okay, I think so if they like, win, so... Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if Team Z wins, these guys could would still go on, too. Yeah. Okay. At least I think it is that well whatever if we're wrong y'all will let us know Our i'm still saying they don't have enough that. players for like a whole a whole team so there gotta be mm. some reinforcements for like the bench well then we also have people coming from the other teams right as the highest score is going on so right. we're, we're definitely going to have a moment probably a good like five or so minutes of ego explaining the next round and like you know how yeah. other people what those high scores like what team they're going to be a part of and all kind of shit like that so i think i think i'm probably just going to read the manga when the season is over because i'm really into it what i think i think i think i'm going to read the manga when this season's up because this is my this is like you know i, I like me a good sports manga i love high I mean, this is one of the downsides of yaoi um <laughs> this is one of the downsides of yaoi i've been dodging spoilers all over the place Mm-hmm. Because of course the anime gets popular, and now the fucking the fucking dojins are making their fucking rounds. Of and course, some of the dojins, the, the 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 it's not smut, it's not smut, but it's like some of the dojins have uh, covers that are clearly spoilers of like what to <laughs> come. Come and, on, and so I've just been like. Okay, well, I just have to avoid every single one. Which, I mean, like, it was a dojin of a series that I don't watch or that I'm currently watching and I don't want to get spoiled on. I don't, I don't look into it. Like, Jujutsu Kaisen, horrible dojins. Like, spoil everything. Everything. <laughs> they spoil everything. So I avoid, I avoid those. I avoid Demon Slayer dojins. I avoid all that kind of shit like that. Like, and that's just on, like, an all level. Like, I don't touch them, like, show them I... <laughs> And oh, other God. shit. Like I just I just cannot touch those series because I will be spoiled. So but yeah, um shit I can say based off of what little bit I've seen, shit's gonna get shaken up, clearly. Like a lot. So but yeah, um 
Oh, wow. See, just the different areas of of manga and entertainment in Japan. It's just crazy how, like, that gets transferred over to other places. And blah. Yeah, I think the series is going to be phenomenal based off of what they, they've been able to carry the hype very easily. So that's good. Yeah, I, I think we, I mentioned last week when the Chigiri, or was it, it was a couple weeks ago, when they had that episode where finally somebody did something that was like outside the probable laws of physics. And I'm just like, okay, th- this is the, they've, they've, they've been very careful. They can over stylize like what's happening, but most of the time what these players are doing, these kids, they're not like, it's not actually crazy. It's yeah. just over dramatized. But um, I still felt like they kind of stuck to that in this episode as well. Because realistically, again, like, what was anybody actually doing? Oh, well, Bachira did a couple of, like, cool dribbles. But that's it. It wasn't, it, it, like, it wasn't something that you could not see, like, a, a in a good soccer game. Would you see, like, th- that much flashiness? Probably not. But, no. like... Yeah, one yeah, yeah, guy yeah. beating like three or four defenders on the dribble is like not crazy. It, oh, it really? Just, no, it's not. I mean, like oh. you'd you'd be very good, but it's not. I mean, it happens all the time. So, you know, it's, it's just not going to be stylized with music and eyes and shit. Yeah. Um. So there's like so there's like that aspect. Um. Even the even the quote unquote like hype shit really wasn't all that complicated. Oh, Bachira did like two or three dribble moves and then like a, a trick shot for you know a scoring the super aggro dude is like you know oh he shot from 23 meters now he shoots from 28 meters like it's like you know it's a long long ball but again not crazy it's not something that's like super unusual it's just very stylized yeah and i think like that's what they that's what they've been able to more or less you know r- catch accelerating so fast that you catch up to your own pass you can do that. It just wouldn't be done in that way. Like, you you kind of would have, like, an open lane. You would, like, kick it further. The ball would slow down because of friction, and you would just outrun yourself. So, but this guy, I think he did some shit. Chigiri did it, like, midair one time. I was like, all right, guy, come on, bro. <laughs> like, that's not going to happen. Yeah. But. but it's pretty grounded, so I'm not, I'm not upset about it. You know, the little bits of fantasy they want to throw in there, it's, it's cool. Um, okay. Uh, where are you with Bleach? The same place I was earlier. So, I will say that, like, the last couple episodes of Bleach feel a lot more like the OG series, and that can be for better you said or that worse. Last week, yeah. Yeah, it can be for better or worse. Now, for me personally, one of the things that I've noticed that, that uh, like, by taste, they're not, um, when they do the sort of like training arc stuff or things that are like just exposition heavy, but there's no action in the offing, which is basically what all like the aftermath episodes were outside of Unohana and Kempachi going ham. Um, it still has a lot of the cadence of like the original series, but obviously the production value is a little bit higher for like the non battle stuff, but it still feels a lot like that you know like the exposition that they were doing in bleach um so if you like if you find it to be over overly like humorous and tone shifting and kind of like you know goofy and under animated on purpose then and you like that it's cool if you always felt like that was the weakest part of the storytelling then you won't like it as much i think that one of the things this series has to do is straddle the gap it's got to be a prestige anime product with like high quality animation where's where it's necessary to wow people who may have never watched the original and therefore like you know get them hyped up but it does need to still have a lot of the same like comedic beats and other things that the original you know also had so if you it's one of those like you can't you can't get around the clunkier aspects of the storytelling because that's just what's there. But it still feels new. It doesn't feel like I'm 
seeing something animated in like 2006. Um, that is important. Yeah. And also, maybe they're just saving the shit up because they said movie quality, but we don't know their actual budget. So I mean, there's no fucking way that they were going to produce 40, 50 episodes at the cost of what it would take to do, you know, a traditional uh, yeah. animated movie. Which, I mean, the, like, I don't care what budget is allocated. Even for something like Dragon Ball, it would never make its money back. Like, on its own. If you spent... Oh. Because think about it, right? So, a successful animated film in Japan may take home... 30 million to 50 million dollars yeah like at the upper end but they cost like probably upwards of 25 million bucks to produce, produce if you include like marketing and and a movie is usually no more than two hours long so you're talking about 120 minutes of animation spread over maybe 20 million dollars like, like that's just back of the napkin math but you're talking like for like a, if a if a regular anime is like 20 minutes let's just shorthand that so for the to do 20 minutes of animation you at the cost of doing it for a movie you're talking about you know in the two to three million two to four million dollar range for 20 minutes ain't no fucking way you're doing 50 ep- you're not gonna spend a hundred million dollars to produce a t 50 episodes or 40 episodes of a tv series like no, like no, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, no. no. Um, even like Game of Thrones, which went on oh, for a while. Oh yeah, I think it cost three million bucks an episode. Yeah, three to it was like three yeah. to four million, and they shot on location. Like they that had to be an omega hit in order had for to. HBO to justify that shit. Yeah, yeah. The latter seasons were like. Were they that much per episode? They were more. They because yeah, they, they were, were doing more. so much more CGI. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they were way more than yeah. But I do remember Ain't that, no fucking that way. Point. Yeah. You can you can get away with it like in America. Hollywood, America. Yeah, like with the kind of like again, like HBO, Warner, they can they could do that for one show. And that one show has to be like the biggest hit and it's got to sell their entire streaming service. Right there, I don't know if there's even Street, been residual. Yeah, like, mar- like yeah, I don't think in Japan there has been a hundred million dollar anything. Like, Whoa. I don't think there's been. I don't think there's been really? a movie that they've released because typically, j- like Japanese productions are smaller than yeah. U.S. Maybe there have been some video games that probably took more than a hundred million dollars, you know, to develop. But it would be unusual for that to happen mm. you know the 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 i think i went and looked and like if you look at um just animated films in japan well, you know what 100 million to develop breath of the wild 2 maybe maybe it, but even no it's not it wouldn't be nintendo nintendo's notorious for fucking because <laughs> they have like they cheap have ass hardware so- well they have monolith soft though well yeah, yeah. Now, but no they, no no yeah. i think final fantasy 7 remake cost oh, yeah. almost 150 million dollars to make but that's because they had to restart halfway they through everything they did yeah. everything yeah um and now in the also, in the west in the fault right i will now, in, that nigga all day every day <laughs> Every like day. in in America, like there are plenty of movies. Like all the the big time Marvel movies were like maybe four hundred million. Mm-hmm. Some of some t- um, James uh, Avatar was like half a billion dollars. The sequels are probably going to wind up costing. Oh my god, more. they're pushing the way of the water so much. I'm just like, I yeah. don't care. It's been how many years has it been? Over I, a decade. I don't care. Anyway, I like. I do not. I don't even remember the first movie. Right. But here's the thing, though. It's not unusual for big time blockbusters in the U.S. to gross up more than a billion dollars. Yeah. Well, the Marvel so, like, movies for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, spending three, four hundred million dollars on a movie to get a in the U.S. seven hundred. Right. Yeah. To do no one else can do that. 
it doesn't happen in China. It doesn't happen in Japan. These budgets are like fractions of the size. Which, but by I, the way, is why a lot of the, the Chinese live... market a very big proponent of like Marvel movies, though. Sometimes, if there's no black people in them. I was gonna bring that up right after because I know that <laughs> I, um, uh, Black Panther two. It's not in China. They they no. wouldn't allow it, right? Yeah, and actually, I was joking, but re- in reality, um, a lot of Marvel movies have a hard time uh, getting certified in China, especially lately. Like, oh. they, for the, I think Black Panther is the second or the third um, Marvel movie that did not get certified by the, whatever, the, the, their mm-hmm. import, whatever, authority. Mm-hmm. Might be the second one. And I don't think the first one, I think the original Black Panther actually did go to China. It did, but um, I remember a lot of people... Uh, well, anyways, but yeah. Well, they changed all the marketing and they put all the white people on top. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I'm what I'm getting at is just that it's easy to forget that the sizes of budgets for all projects in Japan are fractionally small compared to what we think of as similarly sized franchises in the U.S. And so, with respect to Bleach, I expect that they need some episodes that are cheap to make, and the cheap episodes are going to be the ones that feel a lot more like the original series because if you really think about it, there was a... I'm not talking about filler. I'm just talking about, like, episodes where not a lot was really happening on screen, but there was a lot of exposition. Those are the episodes of the original series that were there and plotted out to be uh, cost savers. And so... Is that what you feel like we're getting right now? Right. It's the same script. It's the same writer. You know, the only difference really is that the production staff is has a higher budget. But when it comes down to these like very exposition heavy training, mm. you know, world building pieces of the story, it's going to feel exactly like the original show. I would but say, I think the art style is better. I'm, hmm, I'll hold that opinion. But what I'm thinking about saying is which I haven't watched episodes yet. So I will I'll come back around and like reinforce and state if I'm wrong or not. But what we got from the first few episodes, especially with like the scene direction and how they transferred scenes, I would, I would have liked some of that to stick around. Like they could at least play artistically yeah. with like the you know less action heavy because that's what they did when um like with the two sisters like in the kitchen and then like the them turning the flame on and then it transitioning into another scene. Like they could still be artistically creative with. S- some stuff but i guess it's you know well say, say I'll, all i'll say, say though is that uh the whatever you feel about the the kind of aftermath episodes i think for the most part they're handled pretty well like i again i'm a bleach fan i enjoyed a lot of the original series and the way the method of storytelling i'm just saying that it's if you're somebody who wants to nitpick this is an area where it's oh, divisive they're gonna have a, a ball <clears throat> Okay. But one way, one one thing they won't be complaining about is motherfucking Hikifune of Zero Squad because she dropped her slender form this week. And I saw niggas some, thirsting. She got I some them, fat I ones. Them. I saw. She them. got some fat ones. I saw them <laughs> thirsting. I saw them thirsting all over. I saw them, which I was kind of just like, oh yeah, like not even really surprising, but okay. No. No, 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 no. Um, the reveal is funny. And again, it's the humor of the sort of exposition side that comes out more. Because they, they had more gags. And it's it's Ichigo and Renji, for the most part, um, together. Um, it, the, the two subplots are like um, all the stuff with Zero Squad. And then the, the face-off between um, Unohana and... Uh, uh, Kempachi. Yeah. And so as a result, I think the first half, I'm talking about episode nine, which is the latest episode, probably like the first half or two thirds are that classic old bleach. But the last third is actually very well animated. And it's the fight between uh, Unohana and Kempachi. And that shit is sick. And it's actually one of my favorite parts of the, um, the Thousand wait, Year Blood is War. Is this where Unohana shows their true colors? Yeah. Correct. You you finally learn, you know, what's really good yeah. with that. <laughs> oh and, yeah. Uh, oh she... yeah. Because I think I saw a side by side like the panel with the um the anime. 
where like Unohana was like looking back or some mm-hmm. shit like that. Yeah, okay. Ooh, well, let me get the. F- Ooh, let me catch the fuck up. Well, oh, I mean, I'm caught up on that anyway, so yeah, we'll see. Yeah, so I think that um, you know, the, I I enjoy what we're getting this season. It's more or less what I want them to do, and I'm still aware that there are limitations as to what can be done on TV. I'm just waiting. If it's not going to be Bleach, fine. But give me one of those OG uh, IPs. I, it's not going to be Dragon Ball. It needs to be, but no, it won't be. It won't be. It won't be. Because but they're give me one away of those... with murder already. Yeah, so give me one of those they? OG series where it's like where the studio and everybody involved just says, fuck it. We are, we are already printing infinite money. We are going to show these motherfuckers, like, what is possible. You know, if you just say, forget the fucking budget, let's go. Because, like, we brought up Game of Thrones before, but a big reason why that, that series popped off. I mean, I love the books. I was, a, I was a book reader. You know, I think George R. R. Martin, smart guy, great writer, fun shit. But the reason it popped off was literally because HBO promised you every fucking week you got the equivalent of like a one hour uh, feature, like feature quality movie. Yeah. That's why you were showing up. You know? I mean, all the other stuff is good. Jon Snow, Red Wedding, all that fun shit. Yeah, yeah, cool. But like, it was produced to holy fucking hell. And HBO did in fact say, fuck it. We're going to show them what we can do. And yeah, there were limitations, but like they sent these motherfuckers to the other side of the world to shoot on sets that they fucking built up. Like the Battle of the Bastards is something that is better than shit in a lot of movies. Yes, I will. Yes, absolutely. You know, whatever you want to say about it. So that's so my point is, when are we going to get the anime that does that? The the Evangelion movies are kind of close. The Evangelion, yeah. Oh, my God, yes. They're kind of close to that because again, that's a that's an IP that fucking prints money. You have the original creators there saying, "Listen, I'm about to blow this shit the fuck up. Like, let's fucking go." You know, like that's fine. Can I, I actually, sus- I suspect this is just my suspicion that um, when they get around to doing the full on remake of original Gundam, that's where we're going to see it. Mm, mm, mm. Because eventually they are going to... And the I, I mean eventually, I mean... infinite. I mean soon. I mean, like, in the next five years, I expect this to happen. Um, and, and when it does, they're just going to... Because I think Witch from Mercury is going to end on such a high note that it's going to bring in just, like, an intense amount of people who are just going to go back and be like, what was before this? What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? And then they're going to be like, this is the perfect time to reboot. Like, it's the right. pre- remake. Because we've right. already passed the 50th anniversary, so I thought that maybe that would be... I just don't... I don't really see anything else that has no. that money. Yeah. You, well, it, it, on top of that, it's not just has the money, but the money is fucking built into the new release. Because, like, you know with Gundam, you could just release more model kits. Actually. And if you're if you're doing, like, the, the whatever they call it, like, Gundam original remake, whatever, and you're giving out... You get to re reprint essentially the og line of like all the suits from the original series but you can do it with like new molds and convince these motherfuckers to like buy 150 dollars worth of premium bandai fucking plastic when the episodes start dropping i don't know of any other series besides maybe a dragon ball that just can monetize the fuck out of an active um you know like 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 an active run like a new movie Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, I, we, at some point we'll go back to this, but, um, like another episode, but the final tally for just how much fucking money, uh, unicorn, uh, and the unicorn line of kits. Oh, now the kits I can. Yo, it, when I saw the numbers, I was flabbergasted. It was like hundred, it was like some hundred something million dollars. Million? Yeah. Million. Because for remember they sold, alone. they sold the kits over like six years. Because the OVAs, they started they started putting them out before the first OVA came out. I think it took four or five years for all the OVAs to come. And then they re-released a bunch of shit when they did the TV cut of Unicorn. So, well, that's fucking insane. 
But yeah. looking at this stuff, the only thing that I could see us getting like high quality like movie movie remake would be Fate Stay Night. Oh shit. Yes. Fate. I forgot about that. Because they yes. have they have infinite money. Yes. They have yes. money. And yes. we got, uh, we got yeah. Fate yep. Yep. Unlimited. But Stay Night, we still only have that yep. like, that old old version. So what's they, the what is the correct route? Is it stay night? Is that the correct route? I don't think. Uh, no, I think heavens. It's heavens. So Field. Hev- oh, heavens feel. But heavens the... feel is like insane. Like, yeah, is I I don't just know, fucking... know which one is can is like the canon. I don't. Main I think, it, I think, route. think I don't know. I think there it's the three routes. I don't know which one is the canon. I don't know either. I, yeah. Actually, you know what? I think all of them are canon mm. based off of. Uh, I think every single route has a spinoff. Okay. That's funny. Yeah. Which also, so yeah. Because they did, they did Fate you, Zero. You're right. I'm bad. I forgot. You were totally 100% correct. It's yeah. going to be a Fate show. Something. Yeah. It's going to be a Fate something. Because Fate Zero was completely original. And then yeah. Unlimited Blade Works came and niggas lashed their mind. Because they were like, what yes. is this series? Yes. And then they did Heaven's Feel, which I haven't I haven't seen the Heaven's Feel movies, but niggas are literally like it's some of the best anime. Oh, it is. No, it, that's just fucking crazy. Yeah. So I'm like, if they're gonna do a remake, Fate Stay Night. Yeah, like, that is they the have one. the they have Man, the that that's that's wild that it would be that and not Dragon Ball. <laughs> but you're right. You're totally correct. Why would Dragon Ball do anything for the fans? That's true. Why would they do anything? Why would they do anything outside of milking money? Why? These billion dollar IPs. That's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah, like, it's, it's like, like, exactly. And Fate is, well, no, Fate, probably with Fate Grand Order is billion. No, Fate, is it, fate is it is also billion? is well monetized. I just, I'm just saying, like, remember when we, uh, like, a couple of years ago, or maybe a year ago, we went and looked up on the, for the, for the pod, the, uh, the i the whatever the ips that were the most valuable and yes! it's like you see yes! these this shit and i think dragon ball was like in the top like 15 and it's like worth x billion hello of kitty like, was like yeah, oh my god so like you're telling me that they can host the olympics like like goku can be the host of the olympics but we can't get a high quality like blow out the barn doors. No, let's go fucking crazy TVs. No, because we get fucking super with like Goku's face looking like it's Dragon melting Ball into fans a. Fans settle. They settle. You want to know what the you know I know the difference between Dragon Ball fans and Fate fans. Fate Granddaughter dropped, and them niggas was like unacceptable. <laughs> we will <laughs> not take this shit, and you will not get our money. They turned Damn. that shit around so fast. They turned it around because they were like, you know what? We really did just do this as a cash grab. But if Damn. you want a real fate, we'll give it to you. And they get like the fact that Camelot has like two movies. The final Damn. thing has a movie. The um, uh, what's it called? Babylon has a whole anime anime series that's fire. Like yeah, Babylon is good. Like it's real good. Like. Even it's just, just fucking you crazy. I, half the time I didn't even know what the fuck they were talking about. The fight yeah, because the beginning it's like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I it jumped because I tried to play. I played through the prologue and half of the first thing, and I was like, I see why niggas hated this. It's horrible. This mm-hmm. is why they dragged your asses. But to see from me playing that to where it's at at Babylon, I'm like, I don't know what happened in the first like what five or six singularities. Seven, right. seven singularities. But I saw Assassin. I'm like, all right, bro, let's go. Let's fucking go. Actually, so, it was a Ketsu- It was when Quetzalcoatl showed up that I was like, I was totally in. When yeah. that Quetzalcoatl, when that bitch went again. What's the god's name? The, oh the, fuck. That shit. Where she was like, yes. I'm about to use my noble phantasm. And yes. I was like, okay, cute girl. Insane. Insane. Yes. Insane. Yes. But that's the thing, though. They have the money. Because they, they spent do. the money on those random ass anime episodes. Yeah, that's so, true. I think oh, that's you're right. between... You're, when you're right, you're right. The Dragon Ball fans and the Fate fans. And the Fate fans, they will bitch. They will, mm. they will literally say, this is not good enough. Like, this is not good enough. Especially with Grand Order. It's like, we give you too much money. And with the rates of Grand Order for summoning, 
They're like, we'll give you too much money. This is unacceptable. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. The worst thing about the Dragon Ball fandom is the poverty. These, this, 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 some poverty ass niggas in that fandom mm-hmm. will take any. They'll mm-hmm. take crumbs. They're not because they're spending money on the Dragon Ball. The fifty. Dragon I just mean, Ball I mean, boxes. psychologically, it's poverty. Because, because okay, yeah. think about they all think the they horse can't get shit. Anything better. Yeah, it's all the horse shit they get shoveled like year after year after year. Either it's literally nothing, or it's you know what was that? What was the one? Um, like, why did we did we need? Uh, Dragon Ball Kakarot. Do, is that what we want Dragon you spending Ball, your money you know, on? I actually think that the most like out there thing that they did was the Dragon Ball Dead by Daylight thing. Yes, I don't understand that. Who asked for that? No one. I don't know who asked for it, but actually watching people play it on Twitch, I'm like, this actually looks fun. So whoever, <laughs> whoever pushed that idea, because you wouldn't expect that from Dragon Ball. You wouldn't expect that. That's so doing something outside the box. Another Dragon Ball RPG where you literally go through the whole storyline again. I don't want it. The fact no, that you know it, Xenoverse you know like? Two still has DLC coming out, burn oh, it to the own. fucking ground. Are you like fucking my my kidding? thing? It's it's the equivalent of like you ever get those uh or maybe your your parents did back in the day those like catalogs of like. Um, the the companies that would like print anything on anything like this is a catalog mm-hmm. full of mugs and we could put your company logo on it and you just like go through it's like all this like cheap chintzy shit that it's like if you just slap a logo and it's like yeah You're this is for it. your soccer yeah You're for your soccer it. team for your family reunion and I feel like they do that with like with especially with Dragon Ball they will just like slap that shit on anything it's like oh do we have a next gen console uh uh just just uh we're gonna redo all the events from Dragon Ball Z but in like Unreal Engine five instead of four and it's like okay bro you know like, what would be some easy money for them that they're not gonna do because they're idiots remaking Budokai Tenkaichi Budokai. Do you know how much time I spent playing that shit? Was I good? No. When niggas would come over to my house, what you want to play? Budokai. We, Budokai. we did get we down. Got, we got. We, we got, also got down on um. What was it? The the GT one too. We played that on PlayStation back oh, in the shit. day. Oh shit! Oh yeah. Okay. There was some jank. Listen, that. there was some janky ass shit that they had. But I'm not even mad at like weird, you know very highly specific games i'm just but saying like you know that was them trying that's what i mean something different but now it's like oh we're gonna redo the 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 freezer saga for the eight thousandth time it's like or to the equivalent of printing the logo on a hat it's like oh what's the what's a popular genre all right the uh, uh, stick dragon ball on it like all Listen, I'm a ple- my plea. I don't want to talk about this again, but I know I'll talk. We'll be talking about We're it in two about weeks. Yeah, we talking about. You no, we'll we we'll be talking about it. We will. I'm just like my my soul hurts. It's like for the love of God, just put aside fifty million dollars and just do the true from scratch remat. Not even remaster, rebuild of Dragon Ball. Oh, Dragon Ball. Yes. Dragon Ball. Yeah. Just f- and go and go Where end to end. you have to, to learn end. combos and shit yes. like that to get through the story. Yes. Please. Yeah. Please. Well, you don't Xenoverse get Kamehameha until a certain point. But anyway, it's not going to happen. I mean, the things that I want, and well, I am forever cursed. That these things will not exist. And by the time they do exist, like, you know, all the people I know who will care about them will all be dead. <laughs> like I'll be, I'll be ninety-two years old. My none of my limbs work. They finally release like the perfect Dragon Ball game, and my dementia is so intense that all oh. I can do is just oh, remember. Okay. Like I just, I'm just reliving the old scratchy VHS, you know, of the original Dragon Ball. Can't recognize my own family. Like that's my fate is to be cursed like that. Like, can you imagine if you were like waiting your whole life will for be the on Dragon Ball Xenoverse Ten? Bro, do you know the saddest thing? If you were like uh 45 years old when star wars came out and it like changed your whole life can you imagine like living Today. until you're like almost 80 and then you get the prequel movies <laughs> you waited for 30 years i before haven't you're... watched 
I haven't. I still haven't watched the third sequel movie yet. I still haven't watched it. It's not worth I it. You, you're good. Still haven't watched it. You're so good. And apparently, you don't need to Disney watch any is of that doing shit. so much. They're doing so many spinoffs now. I'm like, I'm actually. I don't good. fucking care. Like, I'm actually good on it. Like, bro, could you? Imagine? How much supplemental material do I have to read to understand what's going on now? You. <laughs> You dedicated your life to Star Wars. You're 90 years old. You're on your deathbed. And they're like, don't worry, Grandpa. We're going to take you out to see Rise of Skywalker. And that's the last movie you ever see before you die. Oh, my God. (laughs) Oh, please, Dragon Ball, don't do this to me. Don't do it. Well, don't fucking do it. Listen, you say that, but Disney is buying anime rights now. I so. know. They if are. I see if I see Goku next to Mickey, I'm going to scream. Oh shit. I'm going to scream. I'm Yo, scream. you know that like no one I have not heard a fucking peep about Black Rock Shooter. But like I I there's a catalog of all the shit uh, that is that is in that series. Bro, that rape scene in the beginning was nothing. I'm absolutely positive it was it. If they started with rape, I don't think it was going to be... And it's not the only time that happens in the show. And Disney's name is all over. It's still on fucking Disney just hanging out. I don't think anyone at the company actually watched it. I don't... Exactly. (laughs) I think that this is some random contingent at Disney that's going to be like, we need to get into anime and this is a good Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Anyway, it's like when Netflix started did that, like that that anime shit, and they, like anime documentary, and they were like, "This is anime, blah, blah blah," and like the guy talking about it. I was like, "Nigga, what have you watched? Like, what are you talking about?" But anyway, okay. So, <sighs> wow, where are we? News. <laughs> I only got one thing, and it's real short. Yuji Naka, can you stay out of jail, please? What are you doing with this insider trading? Why are you trying to be... He's trying to make more money because Sonic was failing for a while. (laughs) Why are you insider trading? Why are you doing this? Like, did you not pay Mm -mm. any attention Mm -mm. to what? what, Martha Stewart? It's not why are you insider trading. Why are you getting caught? Why are you getting caught, bro? How how did you get arrested for insider trading and then get arrested again for insider trading a month later? What the fuck is this? He's the fucking gimme pig. Niggas are pinning that shit on him. They have to be. Bro, chill. Just chill. You I credit you with so many cool things about my childhood. Like I don't need you getting hemmed up like this, bro. Just 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 relax. That's all I got. There's nothing else. Just like I can't believe this motherfucker. Uh. Um. Well, and news wise for me, Alice in Borderland season two is about to pop off. I'm extremely excited about that. Um, Ranking of Kings is getting oh, another special episode in April. Oh my god! Like my heart oh, is swelling. Like, oh. And I mean, everybody, everyone on the on the promotional material is accurate niggas are missing eyes niggas are missing arms niggas are missing hands like it's <laughs> like th- there is no healing like you niggas got gouged like thank you so much boji i appreciate it um Damn. and uh yeah that yeah that's about it for me i mean the kono super spinoff is coming soon which i'm looking forward to because i want to know if it's going to have the same brand of comedy and um uh, comedy beats as the original, because if it does, then it's gonna be a fucking smash hit. And if it doesn't, then what the fuck happened? But right, yeah, um, it's with Megumin, and niggas love Megumin, so <laughs> love Megumin. So we shall see. But that's all the news that I have for today. Um, and then I'll go, I'll go straight into my recommendation. Um, Shakugan no Shana. <gasps> fucking watch. <sighs> Shakugan no Shana. It's old. I know it's old. I know. I know. It doesn't, it definitely does not move at the same pace as shows now. It's worth it though, y'all. It's so fucking worth it. The third season is like a huge improvement on the first two seasons. But between like the show itself, 
Actually, you know what? The reason why I even recommended it was because um, I got, like, because y'all know I listen to, like, openings and endings and, like, you know, Japanese, J-pop, all kind of shit like that. Mm. Ko- Kotoko showed back up in my recommendations. And Kotoko has done so many anime open video games. Blah, blah, blah. But she was, like, very prominent in Shakugan no Shana. And she, like, made, she made that series for me in certain ways, like, the season, Shakugano, Shakugano Shana, season two, opening two, Blaze, where them niggas are fighting in the air with that nigga that just, is just like shooting like <laughs> like snake fire and shit like that. Like, iconic. One of the most iconic openings I've ever seen in my life. But the music was so fucking perfect. But then it brought me back to Shana where I was like, damn. It was in those days where like, that was some of the only shit that you were getting. Shakugano Shana was one of the only fucking shows where I was like, this is the only thing I'm watching. Like, this is the only thing that's good. And then it got to the point where I was like, I'm starving. I'm going to watch everything else regardless. So, Shaka Gana Shana, it's done. It's complete. You watch all three seasons and you're done. It's over. Just watch it. It's great. It's not revolutionary, but it's good. It's good shit. Watch it. That's cool. You Your recommendation reminded me of another... Uh older series that as i think has been totally overlooked but i was it was super cool when it was out um tokyo ravens which is like yeah yeah like it's um the light novel i think is still that's just still going or uh, maybe it's not still going but it's super it covers way more than what the anime did like it never got yeah it got like 24 episodes but i watched the know. first few episodes Tokyo. it was it was interesting but i never finished that shit I, I think it moved a little too slow for me it is on the slower side because they only get through um two of the arcs i think in the 24 episodes so it's like mm. it's so it's kind of a bummer that it didn't continue over, but uh, I just remember it was one of those series that like I stumbled across just like r- super randomly, and the opening um, was good for it. So yeah, oh yeah, I, absolutely. And like the I, I felt it, if you look at it at least from like the anime design point of view, like it is definitely of a time. You know that like twenty tens, you know a lot of. A lot of bad die jobs, let's put it that way, like on purpose, including the main character has got his fucking tips like, <laughs> oh man, what is this? Oh, um, but uh, no, Tokyo Ravens is a, was a, was an interesting series, a fun watch. I think again, it, it doesn't quite move at the speed of some modern stuff, but if you, if you're into Shotgun Oshana, in a way, Tokyo Ravens is kind of, sort of, um, you know, of the similar milieu. Uh, and I, I think I watched maybe like the first six episodes over again, not this last week, but like a few weeks ago. And I was okay. like, oh yeah, I remember this. This was, this was a whole lot of fun. Too bad it didn't fucking go anywhere. But <laughs> yeah. also I, I beat the shit out of uh, Octopath Traveler. Of Octopath? So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you, you so beat the, the final boss dude? I have not beaten the, I have not beaten the final boss nor the optional um, job bosses, which are fucking crazy. Like, oh, I'm not, I didn't know about them. Oh, yeah, God. I'm not. I'm not in grind mode enough to do that, but I went pretty ham. Uh, yeah. So. Well, that that's more than me. I think I beat two stories, and I was like, "This was great." My two favorite characters. I'm done. Who did you choose? Um, Therion well, and. Uh, Therion's cool. Yeah. Oh, uh, what's gonna call it? The dancer, Primrose. Oh, Primrose. Yeah. Primrose. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I beat Therion Primrose. I like the other characters. Like, I like Hanid. I like the scholar guy. I forgot his name. Um, um, the one who was user. like... Yeah, going after, yeah. like, Cyrus? Cyrus. Um, yeah. I like the merchant girl. Um, she was cool. Some of the other characters, I was kind of just like, I don't live with or without you. But I am looking forward to Octopath Traveler 2 in February. Like, yeah. very much so. Especially because they, I think it's a little bit more um, like Asian inspired. Um, like I think one guy's like samurai esque and things like that. So it's not all just like medieval only. It's branching out. So yeah, I'm I think for that. for me, Hannah was like my first, and so she was always mm. my damage dealer, and so I just followed her story to the end. I definitely was down for Therion. Primrose had a great. I think Primrose's like story, opening story, is probably the 
best. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like, I think hers, because it's like, you immediately want to fucking kill these people, so yes. it's like, okay, good. Yes. Yeah. So that's... Therion's really... was... Therion's was more so to... Well, I just, like, I started with Therion because I was like, oh, thief class. Yay, I love thief classes. Like, you know, mm-hmm. agility, speed, you know, critical hits, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, his story overall, I was like, okay, interesting. Like, it wasn't as harrowing, but Primrose's, I was like, oh, yeah, I fuck with this bitch. Like, we gotta kill these niggas. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, but every time there's a character like that, I'm like, yeah, we see eye to eye. We yeah. see eye to eye. Yeah, we gotta get these niggas. Um, Let's go. One thing I am looking forward to is uh, the Crisis Core remake. Um, Crisis oh, Core reunion. Oh, that came out already here. Uh, oh, God. Niggas are all over it. I'm just like, whatever. Um, I played the original Crisis Core. I, I mean, it was forgettable for me. It It's a weird game. It is. Uh, it, that's that the way. one that had Genesis, right? The guy yes. Who, yeah. And fucking, so the if you're into Gact, it's yeah. you, Gact is all up in that Which shit. Which I mean, I love Gact. But <laughs> Gact. at the same time, I was just like, what the fuck does this have to do with, like, the original? The only shit that really even, like, primarily mattered to the original plot came up near the end. And then they had the other thing. Like, Genesis did not exist until Crisis Core. Right, exactly. Like and now yes. they made him seem as though like this like Sephiroth antagonist. Yeah, every like, like the idea that, so like this is what it's it's a weird game. I mean, we could probably do like a whole Yeah. episode. I mean, on, I'm, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy it. Oh, 100%. Yeah, like but here's the here's the thing. Um I don't I, we could go down the road of like all the weird story stuff and like how dumb apples is like the stupidest shit that I think made me actively dislike Final Fantasy for a while. Because, like, it was just such a stupid thing to build your whole storyline around. Like, I did, I wasn't feeling it. But there was this era, and I want to say it was, like, the PS1 through up until, like, the 360 came out. So uh-huh. that's, like, all the all the consoles and everything else where making a game was pretty inexpensive there were a lot of things you could do to make games cheap and so because they were we weren't in like the super hd area yet there's a lot of weird motherfucking games that are awesome because they're weird crisis core is not necessarily a game i would call awesome no. or you know there are there are things about it that are just broken and fucked up i and honestly felt like it was part of the final fantasy 7 milking phase it was but there's also a lot of like interesting shit in there that I think that um, if you just take all the ideas that they presented and and like made a list of them, everything from like Hojo's like weird fucking like the, the rework of his character and like his motivations with like genetic manipulation and whatever yeah. to like the sort of retconning in a I think actually slightly better backstory for Genova, or at least like what led up to the um, Shinra stuff with Genova. The to... thing is, I've forgotten all of that shit. Of course, I've all of it because it's all it fucking got, weird. The way the stuff so they do is strange. It got really convoluted. Yeah, and like really? I don't think that 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 I don't think that that like the all the compilation of Final Fantasy VII stuff. I don't know if it necessarily was good, but. It, it like now that we're getting like Final Fantasy VII remake and the way they're playing with like the idea of multiple timelines and how they're able to pull in all of these awkward details from like these prior games or like uh, Dirge of Cerberus and like uh, and you want to talk about a game that was fucking this broken? This is it's Dirge the new of Cerberus. Dragon Ball. They're gonna yeah. buy it regardless. Yeah, like I bought I th- it regardless. I'm I think at the end of the day, it being like clunky and goofy. Um, is part of its charm in 2022. It's also Tetsuya Nomura's fault. It's also yeah, it is also Tetsuya. Also Nomura. his fault. A lot of yeah. it is everything at Square Enix is his fault. I will yeah. put that on him. But like, I think that now, you know, I, I'm I've in the last like 15 years, I think I've played I've played and beaten Crisis Core twice, oh. and uh, there's so much in it that is weird and goofy. But I think I kind of like. A lot of the weird and goofy stuff. The stuff I don't like as much. I just don't like the dialogue. I think that like it's a weirdly written 
Crisis Core is like... I'm interested in playing this one because... So, first of all, I did not beat Final Fantasy VII, um, okay. the remake. I didn't beat it. Okay. Like, I got... I don't even know how fucking far I got. I got I got to the point where I could... Did I get Aerith? I think I, I, think I just got Aerith. Oh, like, shit. Yeah. So, you were like, like maybe a third of the way through? Yeah, like, I did... I was not heavy on... Because it came out, like, right before the pandemic, like, hit the shits, didn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I just kind of was just like, I there's too much going on. I don't give a fuck about this game. Um, so I didn't beat it at that moment. But now Integrate is out, and that's on PC. So I'm thinking about like getting Reunion and then playing Integrate hmm. after that. But then I also feel like getting Reunion, I would still need to remember the majority of the plot from the whole storyline. But then... Also, they're introducing like new characters and shit, aren't they? They yes. introduce a lot of new characters and new plot points and storylines in the remake. So I'm kind yeah. of just like, are they going to like, you know, foreshadow those people or those plot points in reunion now? Because the next part is rebirth. And I'm yes. like that name alone makes me think So you so Aerith given the, that you didn't beat it, I don't wanna spoil too much, but okay. the term remake is uh a red herring okay this is this is not a remake it's not a remake yeah it's not a remake it's it's a different game yeah and but it's a different game that exists side by side with the original original universe yes because of weird funky timeline stuff oh yes Okay, let me go beat this shit then. Okay, so that's what I'm now. saying is like is now the Steam, them is the Steam Winter Sale going on? Let me check. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, but now that they're folding in all of the compilation of Final Fantasy VII stuff into this new structure of the way the stories of all these games intersect with each other. Yeah. I am fascinated by this game because anybody who has beaten Final Fantasy Remake, and knows the scene at the end that has been changed, or at least we didn't realize it, but we thought it was a scene from the original, and then you'd look at it, and you're like, wait, this is different. Does that mean that in this version of Crisis Core, even though we're getting most of the same beats, is it going to operate in a similar way? To yeah. That it's not actually... Because they named it... Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion is so I'm fa- I I really want to know what changed because I know what didn't change is which is some of this, go- this goofy ass lie. fucking dialogue talking about dumb apples that shit's still there but <laughs> because I'm assuming Genesis didn't appear in remake no so no. but you, there's a dark ground uh, section in um. That's hinted at in remake and then in integrate, you actually go down there. So that what that means is the shit that they were uh, that they were talking about at the end of the original Crisis Core is canon, sort of. Well, I don't even remember that. So okay, so I'll just go ahead and yeah. play integrate before. Well, maybe I'll play Reunion, but we'll, 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 I don't know. So this is all, very, all I'm saying is yeah. what they're doing with Final Fantasy VII is fascinating to me because. It is the first time where... They're bringing it all a, together. Yeah, they're bringing it all together, but it's also like the first time I can remember where there was a deliberate bait and switch where people thought for years that they were getting one game and then they literally started playing and they were like, hold on a minute. Something is off. And they loved this, it. They and it was on it. purpose. Yeah. And it was to swerve you into thinking that you were doing... So, that one thing was happening when something else was happening. So maybe like it, it is a guaranteed fact that this new Crisis Core is going to play into that, but we don't know where and how. So I'm ex- I'm actually excited to go back and play this goofy ass motherfucking game with all its weird systems and stilted dialogue and fucking gacked, gacked all over that shit. You know, like I hope the gacked music is still everywhere though. I think the music is still there. You remember that was the real reason is that that he had a falling out with Square Enix. And oh. as a result, he they didn't allow them to use like his likeness and his music and shit. 
So Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it, it got ugly. But I think they seem to have squashed that shit because he's all over this. Oh, so. so that's why we never got like updated versions of Crisis Core. The, I mean, there's the one um, remake of it on... What was it? That, fuck, what, what did what? they release on? It P- came out beyond PSP? Yes, there was a... Uh, re- oh my god. Is it Was it Crisis Core? Oh, H- was it like a mobile version? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. Um, bottom line is, I'm looking forward to it. Um, we'll see just how goofy this game is. Mm. It will integrate is 70 fucking bucks. So, it's worth it though. It is. It's worth it. Really? It's worth it. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. It is. If it hurts say, though, but it is. Say so yeah, these seventy. The, the, I didn't realize that the PlayStation Five games were seventy bucks. I was like, oh, I can chill on getting that shit for a minute. No. Uh, hot minute. They they coming for your wallet. They are, and I mean, I'm I'm gonna hold out until Final Fantasy sixteen, hopefully. Well, good on you if you're able to. Keep it, keep it together. Yeah, but we'll I'm, see. I'm committed. <laughs> I'm committed. Well, I guess that is it for this week. It is. It is. So you know, if you haven't already, um, you can like, comment, and you can subscribe on YouTube. But also, you can follow us on Twitter, anime underscore savants for however long that's gonna be around. Um, and then just regular anime savants on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, you know, wherever else. Also, please give us a rating on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. Um, we would put the videos up on Spotify, but Spotify, it's just, they, they don't have their video podcast stuff together. Let's just say that. So you can watch it on YouTube in the meantime. Yep. And you can hit me up anytime uh, on Twitter at Neural Handshake and... Uh, hopefully we'll have some fun collab stuff for the the holidays mm-hmm, coming mm-hmm. up. Um, we will do our usual year end um, best ofs, uh, so that should be a lot of fun. I think that there this is one of the mo- most um, a lot of a good variety of of great things I think we got this year, um, especially from interesting places like Netflix with uh, you know the. I'm Cyberpunk literally about to hop on things. Lookism like ASAP. I'm right, really right, right, about right. That one. So yeah, a lot, lot of fun stuff. So hopefully look forward to that. Um, but otherwise, thank you guys for joining us and peace out. Bye.